I want that character to end correctly. So The Walking Dead, Daryl Dixon, Book of Carol just finished uh, premiering at the Tribeca Film Festival. The very first episode was screened there. It wasn't a very big turnout. It kind of feels like they wanted to keep it a bit smaller. They didn't uh, invite a lot of people, but we have some good insights. We have Melissa and Norman back together doing the panel. We've got Scott Gimple, uh, David Zabel, who was there. There are several articles that are being written uh, out there. Some I'm finding are either don't really have any information in it or they skew a bit biased. I'm going to show here some videos that I listen to and I think it's best if you actually listen to the videos that are out. I feel like that's going to get the best uh, viewpoint. An ongoing theme they talked about was you know Daryl his conflict of going back home, staying at the nest, staying in France, you know finding this sense of like comfort while he was in France. And like one thing he talked about which I'm actually very glad he talked about was like the finale where you know Daryl was going to leave. Laurent shows up and he's like basically surrounded by walkers everywhere. And he talked about Daryl isn't the kind of person that just wants to like abandon a child. I was surprised that there was a surprising number of people saying that Daryl should have just like got on the boat and left and like abandoned a child on a beach who like killed his first walker like <laughs> a week ago basically. And he said that like again like how I feel about Daryl is that Daryl is just not the kind of guy that would just like leave a help, literal helpless child to defend himself. You know, like Laurent made it cross country, but he's extremely lucky that he made it cross country. And if you remember the shot, Daryl is on the beach and Laurent is on this like giant cliff and walkers are literally coming up to him. So why on earth would Daryl be like, sorry kid, bye. A kid that he clearly like, you know, he isn't his father, but he clearly himself has an attachment to him and he enjoys spending time with him, right? Even if it's like a child he just met five minutes ago. He's not going to leave that child alone, right? You know, he says that he's already starting to care about both Laurent and Isabel. He wants to make sure that they're both safe before he leaves anywhere. And that he's not sure when he wants to leave, if. Kind of how we saw again in the finale when they got to the nest. Like, Daryl was very like Susie Homemaker, peeling potatoes, just being very relaxed. He seemed very like content and happy. If you watch the whole series, you can tell that he doesn't really talk a lot. He's broody. Yeah, and they also talked about, and for me personally, is important, is that the surrounding cast around these two are going to be more developed in the second season. You know, because I, I always wondered, like, where did Kodron come from? Like, where did he get this army? Was he in, like, the French army before? You know, like, Jeanette. How did she become this, like, mad scientist lady who, like, creates variants? So that's a big jump from working in a museum to like creating like <laughs> super zombies. So like, where is the correlation, right? Falou and his whole group. We have the group of like the children who were like abandoned and that are, have their own community too. You know, and of course they had to mention the infamous like who came back situation. And I feel like it's somehow going to be Rick and Michonne. I, a part of me feels like it's not them, but like the only kind of epicness it could be is Rick and Michonne. And they were very vague, but it will in fact be answered in the second season. I didn't think that they would just completely ignore it and drop it because like that was a big point of contention is like who came back like I myself was trying to figure out who came back who was going to be like a cameo all of this stuff right you know and Norman has said this in the past but he also reiterated that the finale of season two is the best hour of television for all of the universe of Walking Dead the finale of season two is the best one hour of Walking Dead anything ever yeah and I've said it in press before I'd stick to it it's mind-blowing. And that is a very strong statement to make. I can appreciate the confidence that Norman has. You know, like, if you aren't going to talk up your own stuff, who else will? You know, I watch my own videos. I enjoy my own content. I reference my own content because I'm proud of it. He's clearly proud of this whole show that he's helped create and construct. So, like, if he isn't proud of his video, if he isn't proud of the show... Why should I watch it? If you won't even watch it, why should I, right? Unpopular opinion, but I enjoyed uh, the finale of the first season. I think especially the last like five minutes of it when Daryl is like struggling to go back. I really loved that like whole scene and I think the ending of it was really well. I would also like to mention that uh, Daryl did not look mad that Laurent was on the beach also. Just throwing that out there. So maybe Laurent like 
helped Daryl choose his direction for him. They also talked about, you know, Carol's storyline. Because, like, for me personally, I feel like Carol has a very thorough and complete storyline. She's going to be, like, struggling with her own internal conflict. She's worried about her friend. Everything to do with Carol, they're still pretty vague on it. I think they're still holding off. And probably when we get another trailer, if we ever get one, we'll probably get some more details and stuff for it. So we'll hopefully in the next few months, since apparently we have three more months to wait, we're going to get a trailer and details, more interviews, and we'll see how things go. And they were discussing, you know, the reunion of Daryl and Carol. And it seems as if it's going to be in episode two. Not officially confirmed, supposedly, allegedly. But I feel like episode two is when they're going to get the reunion. So I think my previous prediction is going to be somewhat correct. They're going to do the dual timeline again, like season one. Maybe they're going to splice like in and out between uh, each episode. That way you get like a full like five episodes with like Daryl and Carol together. This one is a big spoiler, but there is apparently a Sophia flashback scene in episode one. So it sounds like Carol is definitely going to be going through like a lot of emotions. You know, maybe like some abandonment issues, like... I've said this before, but I feel like they're like Daryl and Carol are obviously very bonded, but is that bond completely healthy? Like maybe they're too dependent on one another and maybe they can have a journey of where they both become more independent with each other. Right. And then like we had that really great scene of Carol basic kind of asking for permission to move on with her life. So now could we get a version of Daryl? who wants to sort of like break away and like move on with his life. You know, that doesn't mean that Carol and Daryl won't be close. You, you got to kind of move, move apart at some point, right? Like Norman Reedus, again, like we talked about, who said that Daryl is basically a man now officially. And now he's someone, maybe he's someone that can finally stand on his own. I know I personally like the more independent Daryl Dixon. What are your predictions for season two of Daryl Dixon? How do you think this monumous uh, finale is going to end? Like I said, I'm not sure how massive it's going to be. I don't doubt it's going to be good. Is it the best in the entire franchise? I guess we'll have to wait and see. You know, links down below. I have a Patreon with a bunch of reactions going up. Like and subscribe and I will see you very soon.